Hello, this is Diane Mueller. I'm the Director of Community Development at Red Hat, and I'm your closing speaker for um, Intersource Commons and the summit um, that's been going on for two days. And I, I'm really um, grateful that you're here and um, letting me share the stage with you. And I'm gonna talk today about community development in the age of continuous connection. So this is a riff off an article. Um, so that I read about a year, a year and a half ago in Harvard Business Review um, that was focusing on customers and changing business models. And um, part of what I've been doing um, for the past seven or eight years is adapting our open source community models at Red Hat um, to a more ecosystem approach. And that's um, been some of the things that they were talking about in the article really connected with what I was um, thinking about and what we've been doing at Red Hat in our communities. And as well, they really were focusing on um, coming up with some connected strategies um, that could help people who do community developments, whether it's inside of an organization or outside of an organization um, in um, larger communities. So I, I thought that would be a great thing to close on today um, as we go off. Um, we are virtually connected today, but afterwards we're going to hopefully all stay in connection uh, as well. So at Red Hat, we often talk about open source is the source of all technology innovation. I also think it's um, the source of many of my um, uh, headaches and ways of I have to learn to stay connected to the millions of projects that are out there that are part of the ecosystem that make up um, the project Kubernetes and the product OpenShift. Um, and it's uh, open source uh, sibling OKD, which is the um, open source distribution of OpenShift um, that I'm also the co-chair of that working group. So um, besides focusing on these smaller projects, having an, an overview of all of the community from the very from all the different aspects of it, whether it's the um, upstream or downstream projects or the end users and their workloads or um, the different vertical markets that we're all playing in these days, whether it's um, automotive, financial services, telco, edge computing, you name it, medical, healthcare. There are a lot of things to pay attention today and a lot of different angles where we connect at. And I kind of think of it as three-dimensional chess, only maybe more than three dimensions. And if you've um, talked, been to one of my talks before, you've probably seen me with my um, uh, friend and colleague, uh, Daniel Isguerdo um, from Viterjo, who's been hosting the Intersource Commons, and I'm very grateful for the work that we've done together. But what we really have been looking at um, pretty closely are the connections and the connectors and the personas of the people who are connectors within the different communities, specifically within the CNCF, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Um, and it's also what I refer to as the jellyfish diagram because it's kind of um, amorphous, it's always changing. But what we like to watch and what the trends of how people are connected to different projects. So that's one layer, that's sort of the project layer of um, the connections. And there's many of them. Um, it's not just the cloud native computing foundation that we have to pay attention to or interact with and that our projects and ecosystems interact with. But um, the Cloud Native Foundation is really the one that I've been focusing in on the most. And if you ever look at the, um, the crazy landscape diagrams, um, landscapecncf.io, um, I've just taken out the incubated and graduated projects, but there are you know literally thousands of upstream, downstream products, projects, um, and other communities that we have to interact with besides the major foundations. So keeping track of all of these connections um, is really um, the bane and the wonder and the passion of um, being a community developer. And um, the thing that I talk about the most, I think, is that um, it's the health of an open source community um, these days is really measured by the number of connections between the upstream and the downstream projects. When you see a project that isn't connected, that's standalone, that's standing out there, that, com that, that community 
is probably in need of some nurturing or it's a mature one that's um, a stable, mature project, but it still needs some connection to the other projects that are around it. And really, um, there's lots of measures for health, and I'm sure you've heard about some of them over the past couple of days, but um, this is the one that I think I focus on the most. And there's a new thing that's been coming around um, lately, um, and you're hearing more and more about it, is this virtuous end user cycle. Um, and in my role at um, Red Hat, um, I host these end user um, events, um, and they're called OpenShift Commons Gatherings. There's another one coming up on the 21st of um, September that if you speak Spanish, you're quite welcome to come. Um, but what we're seeing in from is a change in the way end users participate. Um, in the past, um, we as community development people or community managers, we're really focused on listening to the end users to get feedback and issues and see what new features they wanted. And then we would rely on our engineers or our project um, contributors to enhance those projects. And then they get put into either new projects or the existing projects. And we'd have this cycle, the virtuous cycle. But now I think the virtuous cycle has actually changed and expanded in a really big and new and interesting way in that there are many more end users who are in each of these other segments as well. Um, and when we flipped from being a single-minded focused open source project that was OpenShift um, five years ago to being rebasing on Kubernetes, what we um, start finding was that we were pushing even our end users who were, wanted to contribute to contribute upstream. Um, and what's been happening is you're seeing many more projects that have end users actively participating in those projects outside of their firewalls, as well as numerous um, projects that um, have been pushed outside of the firewall into the cloud native um, computing foundation from Lyft, from Uber. Uber, for example, contributed Jaeger and um, open tracing and uh, I'm sure other things as well, but and lots of resources and engineers. So we're seeing this new um, era, I think, of much more active end user participation in upstream projects and the evolution of um, the acceptance of open source in internal projects and bringing other participants into those projects. So there's some big changes which are causing more connections um, to be tracked. Um, and one of the things that I've been trying to do a lot, um, I, I consider myself no longer a developer, but a developer of communities, a developer of OpenShift Commons, which is the community that, um, that I host and moderate and, and incubate. Um, and what my real goal with Commons is to create a new community model using some of these connected strategies to promote peer-to-peer -peer, um, interactions and connections and, and in doing so create better connected communities to foster cross-community collaboration across the ecosystem, not just into OpenShift itself. And we do all kinds of things um, and we'll talk a little bit more about some of these things. So some of the connected strategies that we use yeah, and that come from that um, Harvard Business Re Review article that I like so much um, were to respond to the desire to connect and meet our community or your community, this is the advice, um, where they are. So things have changed a lot. Um, there's uh, been a seismic shift in the way that we connect. Um, it used to be before COVID and before um, Zoom and before those days, we were always beholden to going to an event, to meeting people, hallway um, conversations to connect. And now there is everything from we've graduated from IRC, which is still very active, to Slack, to, you know, I've seen stuff done on TikTok, um, all kinds of places. It doesn't mean you have to go to all of them, but you really have to meet your communities where they are. So for us, that means we are pushing out content um, through OpenShift Commons briefings, which get published to YouTube Live, to Facebook Live, to Twitch TV, and we're creating much more curated comment, content. Doesn't mean we're creating more content, but what we're doing is taking tools like playlists from YouTube and um, creating playlists from all that content we're creating in all these virtual spaces and making it available um, in curated playlists. So automotive and edge, that people who want to know more about IoT and that, we're taking the the talks from that and creating specific playlists um, as also one of the big things that we're doing is giving away the podium. 
So um, I always say I don't like the sound of my own voice anymore. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear customer voices. I want to hear project leads. I want to hear directly um, from my peers about these topics. And so to do that, we have to give away the podium and we have to create these spaces like you're doing here today with um, InnerSource um, Commons and the summits. Um, we're making things available um, and spaces for people to connect. And we, today they're virtual. Um, in the future, we'll go back to having face-to-face stuff, -face but I think the world is changing. And um, one of the keys is, is coaching new behaviors um, for sharing, for contributing, and for giving feedback. Um, all of these things lead to engagement and connections. So that's really the key here is we're coaching people to be more open about sharing, to do it in healthy, connected ways, as well as we're starting to leverage many more um, new techniques for automatic um, connection. So um, for instance, with OpenShift Commons, um, we've switched from an individual membership basis to organizational based, which means we work with an organization, um, an end user or a partner or an upstream project, and we make a membership that's for the entire organization. So we onboard once, we do all the GDPR, all the legal stuff once, um, and then we just add people in um, based on that membership. That has really helped us um, facil you know, facilitate the onboarding experience um, as well as um, help, a lot of what we do is help peers within an organization meet each other. Uh, we are also leveraging a lot of uh, relationship management tools um, CRMs used to be customer relationship management. Um, now I think it's community relationship management is what that C should be. And um, even, even people in sales and marketing now talk much more about creating ecosystems and community um, than ever before. Um, with all of the automation that's in place and all of these connections, really um, what we are, have to always watch for is one, um, making sure that um, we follow all the GDPR and onboarding stuff um, and have the legal agreements in place so we can do this, um, as well as um, that we don't dehumanize the con um, connections. So this is things like making sure we're not spamming people or using it for vendor promotion, that we really are focusing on the community aspects and the collaboration aspects and not trying to upsell or sell, you know, give away, um, do lead gen or anything like that. Um, so it's, there's some of these strategies, and we could talk more about it in the Slack um, after the talk uh, and, and chat some more. But these are some of the key things that I think um, today we've been leveraging um, at Red Hat um, and, and other communities that, that, that I um, work in, from maker communities to local communities, is really trying to meet people where they are, give away the podium, promote um, healthy, um, connected behaviors, um, promote, promote engagement, and really leverage the technology um, and make sure that um, we remain in connection with people. Maybe not 24 by seven, but um, quite close. Because I think the really interesting thing um, about the universe that we live in now, I mean, there, I think it was 96 um, million GitHub repos. Um, well, with uh, Jellyfish, uh, someone uh, found this site for me. Uh, there are about a species list of just about 2,000. Um, and I think this is really an apt metaphor for the world we're in right now, because with jellyfish, there's been speculation that there are as many as 300,000 more species that we haven't seen. So if you think about those 96 million GitHub repos, they may have been seen by one or two um, uh, folks out there who built them, um, and they haven't even entered our universe. Um, so it's these connections um, and these uh, tools like Vitergia and uh, different tools that we've used to analyze these relationships, um, we are just beginning to see the um, tip of the iceberg of the innovations that we are able to um, manifest as humans in technology and in connection. And hopefully um, we'll hear more um, from you, um, from your organizations, and see more of what you're doing um, out there in the open. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to connecting with you in the Slack channel and um, if you want to get a hold of me, um, there's lots of easy ways to do it, but 
um, at OpenShift Commons uh, is uh, where I, I live and breathe. At Python DJ is my um, Twitter handle. dmuller at redhat.com is uh, me and how to get a hold of me directly. Um, and that's where I'd like to say thank you for spending the few minutes here with me, um, listening to me rattle on about um, the importance of cultivating healthy connections, um, understanding where those connections are, and creating some connected strategies for doing so successfully. So thanks, um, and thank you to Daniel, to Danny, and everyone else for um, all the effort you put into making today such a wonderful um, event, and I look forward to checking in with all of you in the chat and in Slack. Take care. Stay healthy. Stay safe.